Tutorial Tuesday with Crafting Cousins. Let's craft y'all! For this project, I'm going to take an old terracotta pot that has been in storage for a couple of years and refinish it. I'm going to use the black chalkboard paint that I got from the Cracker Square section at the Dollar Tree and completely cover my planter and the saucer. I did paint part of the inside of the planter just in case it showed once I got my plant in. I want to add the words, Love Grows Here, with a heart on the bottom of the planner. Then I want to put our names, our fur baby's name, and our grandchildren's names around the top of it. As I've told y'all before, my handwriting's not the greatest, so I used my printer to print out the wording, and then I just cut it apart so that I could fit it on. going to use a piece of chalk and scribble on the back of the paper. Did you notice that price? It was only 10 cents for that box of chalk. That really lets you know how old it was. I'm going to use the chalk to scribble on the back of the paper and then I will take the paper to the planter, draw over the letters, and this will transfer the pattern onto my planter. This is the same method we use when we scribble over paper with a pencil and then transfer the image to another surface. I used the chalk since I was working on a black background. Once I get a section transferred, I use a chalkboard marker that I got from the Dollar Tree and paint on the lettering. As I was transferring the second set of names, I noticed that I didn't space them correctly so that they would go all the way around. I finally decided to just add the word family between our grandson's name and my husband's name. I used the lettering from one of the other names to get the right dimensions for the word family. If you happen to make a mistake when you're putting your words on, don't worry about it. Just use your black chalkboard paint, repaint the area, and then once it's dry, you can use your marker to redo the words. After I finish the names, I use the same method and paint the Love Grows here on two sides of the planter. The font that I chose to use was a free font from 1001 Free Fonts called DK Lemon Yellow Sun. I love the whimsical look of this font and it's really easy to get it right even with my lettering. There was a lot of chalk dust on the project at the end, but it came off real easily by just wiping it with a paper towel. Now that my planter is finished, I'm going to be adding a piece of my violet that broke off from my big plant. I've had it in water and it's grown some really good roots, so I'm going to transfer it to this planter. First, I add some rocks to the bottom of the pot to help with the drainage. Then I just put in some potting soil that I picked up from the Dollar Tree and I add my plant in. I wanted to make sure that it was high enough up that the leaves didn't rest on the rim of the pot. And there's our completed planter. I am really happy with how this one turned out. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below. Make sure you ring that bell so you'll be notified every time we upload new content. We 
upload five days a week, offering a variety of DIYs, paper crafting, home decor hauls, and craft show information. I'm sure you will find something you will love with Crafting Cousins. For this project, I'm going to be using another one of the frames that I picked up from the thrift store. I love using old frames in my projects. I think it just gives them a more finished high-end look. Every time I go to the thrift store, I go over to the frame section and I buy any of the nice ones that are on the half off sale. You can get frames at the Dollar Tree, but they're not wood and honestly, by the time I get these for half off, they're cheaper than the ones from the Dollar Tree. I took the back off the frame and removed the mat and the glass. Now I'm going to use my black chalkboard paint that I got in the Crafter Square section at the Dollar Tree to paint my frame. I paint the back and the insides as well, but that's really just my OCD. You don't have to do that step because it doesn't show once everything is together. I'm going to take the stand off my frame. This was a really nice frame and that stand did not want to come off easily, but I kept twisting until it finally popped off. It did leave a hole in the back, but that's okay. It won't show when it's displayed. These are some craft sticks that I had left from other projects. I get these at the Dollar Tree too, and there's like 60 to a pack. I'm going to cut off the round end of my sticks. I will be attaching them end to end on my board, so I needed to have flat ends. I'm just using a pair of kitchen scissors to cut them with. They're pretty thin, so they cut through easily. Once my sticks are cut down, I lay them out on my board to figure out how I want to place them. I did not want the seams to line up, so I'm offsetting them on each row. Really isn't a pattern to how I'm doing this, I just arrange them until I like how it looks. Now I'm going to attach the sticks to the backboard of the frame using my hot glue. I did have to trim down some of the sticks to make the ends match up, and some of them would splinter if I wasn't careful, so in that case I just used my block sander that I get from the Dollar Tree and I sanded down some of the ends so that they would fit together. After I get all of my sticks attached to my board, I take my Waverly Ivory Chalk Paint and I give the whole thing two good coats of paint. Do you use a lot of craft sticks in your projects? If so, how do you use them? Do you make signs out of them or do you just use them for support? Once my paint is dry, I use my favorite method of distressing. I take an old eyeshadow palette and a stiff brush and just brush the eyeshadow onto my project. I want to highlight all the breaks in the wood, so I make sure that I hit all those areas. I've had several questions about this method. I don't use expensive eyeshadows, I just use the ones from the Dollar Tree because they are inexpensive and they break down real easily so it coats well. I was asked if I have to seal the project to make it stay on, and I never have. It's really the same thing as when you get makeup on a white shirt. Once it's on there, it stays very well. I love doing this method because it gives me so much control. What's your favorite method of distressing projects? I will be adding wording to my sign, so I created my design in Cricut Design Space and cut it out with my machine. I removed the excess vinyl and weeded the design. I'm using iron-on vinyl. I've had several questions about this as well. It is not special vinyl and it is not made specifically for wood. It's just regular iron-on vinyl that you would use on clothing. I get the Paper Studio brand from Hobby Lobby when it's 50% off. In my previous videos, I used the cover that comes with the heat press machine that I use for shirts. But in this one, I wanted to show you that you can simply use parchment paper to cover your design when you're ironing it. And you can get parchment paper at the Dollar Tree. I love using the iron-on vinyl because it really looks like you painted the design onto the wood. 
If you don't have a cutting machine, you can get iron-on letters at the craft stores and at Walmart. You could also just paint the design on your sign. I like to print out my design and then use carbon paper to transfer it to my project and then I just paint it in with markers. I thought my frame looked too shiny to fit in with the farmhouse theme of my sign so I decided to take my chalk paint and distress it. I just used a stiff brush that I dipped into the lid of my paint and then I dabbed it on a paper towel to take some of it off and then just brushed it randomly onto my frame. If you would like a copy of the SVG design that I used for this project, just let me know and I'll be happy to send it to you. Our email is in the description box below. Once my frame is finished, I just pop my sign back into the frame and secure it. And there's our finished project. I love this sign and I think it would be perfect in any farmhouse decor that you may have. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you like, we hope that you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all. We would love to have you tune in all week for Made It Mondays, Tutorial Tuesdays, either Hump Day Hauls or Wednesdays, Trash to Treasure Thursdays, and finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturdays. See you tomorrow!